Well, it looks like it is right about two o'clock. I can kind of get us going while everybody else is joining in. Um, per usual, we do have the chat box and the Q&A box at the bottom and um, of your Zoom screen, and we will be addressing any questions, um, comments, anything like that at the end of the webinar. Um, today, we do have a special guest, and it is Richard Glenn with Perch Security. And uh, Richard, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let you take over, share yours. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully you can see my screen. Let me find everything about my screen. Yes, I can see it. Success. And let me know when you're ready for me to start. Yeah, I'm ready when you are. Oh, okay. Well, thank you everyone. My name is Richard Glenn. I am the channel account manager for Perch Security. Uh, my responsibilities include the states of Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. Uh, so I am the channel manager supporting all of our partners in those fine states. Um, today, I'd like to talk a little bit about perch security uh, and prevention versus detection. Uh, here at Perch Security, if you're all not familiar, we provide SOC, SIM, and IDS as a service. Uh, our platform was created in 2014 by a gentleman by the name of Aaron Chernin. Uh, we just recently were sold to ConnectWise for $80 million, along with uh, Stratazen, two acquisitions that ConnectWise just recently made. Uh, so we will become part of the ConnectWise family. And also, uh, we will be able to enhance our product even to a greater degree uh, with the inclusion of Stratazen, uh, some additional AI um, functionality, um, and with Perch, our SOC and SIM, which has been a world-class uh, and uh, has done a really wonderful job of providing security uh, to the SMB marketplace, which was our focus. Um, today, uh, in security, we tend to have an over-reliance on prevention. And many people kind of get confused. You know, are you secure already or do you need additional tools? Well, uh, prevention, firewalls, antivirus, malware, uh, blocks threats that they can uh, that's already been identified um, so they know what they're looking for detection on the other hand finds yet unknown threats that get past your preventative controls like your firewalls uh, your antivirus and your malware um, those tools can only stop those threats that have been identified if it's a new threat uh, they can't stop it and once it gets past they're pretty much useless to prevent any damage downstream in today's environment, um, the best type of security is to have a layered security a solution. Um, and the best way to really compare a, a, a really good cybersecurity solution uh, is to compare it with either your alarm system at your home or your office. Uh, in those cases, you have preventative measures at the doors, you have locks, you have cameras, uh, you have alarm systems, you have glass break sensors, you even have security cameras, both exterior and for some weird reason, interior. I always thought that was kind of weird is videoing my own interior of my house, but you could certainly do that. But more importantly, uh, you have people at the alarm company that are monitoring all those tools. And if something happens at night or while you're on vacation, they're going to take evasive action on, behalf, on your behalf. They're going to notify you, they're going to notify the fire department, they're going to notify the police, they're going to go down their list and they're going to notify people so that they can take the appropriate action to prevent any additional damage. And unfortunately, in today's security market, um, people tend to have that reliance on just preventative measures. So as a business, they feel that if they have a firewall or antivirus, uh, they're protected. Um, unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, the bad guys get past preventative measures every day, all day long. That's why we keep reading about the increase in cybersecurity crime. That's also why they've become organized and they become extremely dangerous. Um, it's no longer the days of a guy with a cigarette dangling out of his mouth in a basement in some Eastern European country with a light bulb hanging over in a PC. Uh, these are organized crimes that do this a service. So you can simply go onto the dark web, identify the type of, of threat or cybersecurity um, 
threat that you want to release and you can hire somebody to do it on your behalf and all you'll do is collect the, res the residuals and pay a, a percentage. Uh, so they become organized, they became very good at what they do and they're very intelligent. So in today's environment, uh, you really need to continue to have that preventative measure, but you need to add PERCH. And with PERCH, uh, we will detect and respond to any threat that we see. Uh, we will uh, review all the logs of all the devices within your network. Uh, and we will have human and AI intervention watching for any malicious behavior or any anomalies within your network. Uh, we're watching the north, south, east, west. What's going on inside that firewall um, and, and, what, and what kind of traffic that is and what kind of threats exist. Another unfortunate um, uh, aspect of preventative measures is how do you determine or how would you find somebody uh, if they have gotten into your network and how long will it take? Those are two very important questions that PERCH solves for because candidly, again, once they get past the firewall, once they get past uh, the perimeter security, uh, they're the threat that's most dangerous. And in a lot of instances, especially setting where we set, um, your threat isn't necessarily 100% from external. Uh, there are a lot of threats that we catch that are actually internal threats. Uh, one example was we were installed on a network for a large manufacturer. And within the first eight minutes, we identified that one of their system administrators had um, installed a Bitcoin mining system uh, in their server room. Uh, they had no idea. It had been going on for six months. Um, we identified it within the first eight minutes. Uh, the employee was escorted off the premises by the end of the hour. Um, that was a threat that was launched internally. Um, the company would have never known it. Um, one of the challenges that we have is the cyber detection gap. Um, once a compromise happens, a compromise happens in a fairly quick period of time. Uh, exfiltration will happen in a very quick period of time, meaning not only are they in, but now they're running up and down your network. They're watching for payroll. They're watching for large dollar amount transfers. Uh, they're watching for information on email addresses for the, the CFO, uh, the CEO, anything they can do to try to alter payment schedules. Unfortunately, discovery has taken an enormous amount of time. Uh, over 390 minutes, and in some cases, over 127 hours. Uh, that span weeks and, and months. So as we're trying to identify and we're trying to contain the threat, uh, it's already been running rampant for some time. Uh, and that's right now where we stand, uh, and that's what Perch addresses. Our problem isn't a lack of data, but it's the absence and the ability to quickly detect and respond to a threat. Again, how do we find something that's inside our network that shouldn't be and how long is it gonna take? And if you don't have an answer for that question, uh, you better start planning for it. Um, Cause I kind of look at it like your children. Um, I was very protective of my two daughters. I love them to death. I made sure they had everything they needed to succeed in life, but somehow some way they managed to catch cold or the flu. I couldn't stop it. I couldn't prevent it, but I could treat it. And that's really what we need to be looking at not only in security, but also what happens if somebody gets through. Um, most organizations tend to struggle with a SIM, a security information event management. It's a record of all the logs and all the activity from all your devices, your firewalls, your routers, your switches, your antivirus, your phone system, your refrigerators. And they're putting refrigerators online now. So you're gonna need to know because that's a very vulnerable piece of hardware. Uh, nine times out of 10, the appliance manufacturers were very creative with their, their passwords when they, when they set them up. One, two, three, password, X, Y, Z, they're very common uh, and the bad guys know it. But a SIM uh, is really not built for in threat intelligence. A SIM is built as a record of that threat. Uh, finding value in a SIM, um, the challenge with most organizations is who runs it within your organization? Who maintains it? Who continually tunes it? And where are the analysts? Um, and I can tell you that to create a SIM, uh, it's a $4 million minimum investment and it's a $2 million annual cost at a very minimum. Most organizations can't afford that. Um, and they don't want to even have that responsibility. So they want to outsource it. Uh, and that's certainly where Perch comes in. We help with cost control, licensing models. Um, and you're not being punished for being a good security practitioner. You're not having to spend a tremendous amount of capital dollars. 
Um, and also you're very flexible. You can move in and out of the platform if you need, if requirements require you to do so. Uh, we don't know what the future holds, but having the ability and the flexibility to take advantage of a SIM and a SOC today, but also having the flexibility to move on in the future uh, is certainly uh, a lot more attractive than building something and then having uh, it set dormant after a couple of years. Um, and then also, what about the cloud? Everybody's migrating to the cloud. Office 365 and Google Apps, they've been exploding with popularity because of remote workers. Um, those three areas are very, very, very high level of vulnerability. Um, you need to monitor what's going on in all of three of those areas. Um, here at Perch, uh, we provide, provide cloud visibility. Uh, we have a standalone Office 365 and Google offering. So if you just want to cover your remote workers, you want to start out protecting them and then work into your internal network once people start returning. You have a very, very um, uh, inexpensive way of doing that with Perch. And it covers the entire solutions and also includes, includes threat, um, in, or threat uh, or file integrity management. Sorry, stumbled over that one. Uh, file integrity management. So for SharePoint, if you want to make sure that you're locking it down because now everybody's remote, um, you want to make sure that no one's doing something malicious like downloading 30 or 40 or 50 files at once, uh, downloading files from outside of the zip code, the area code. Uh, we do geofencing. Uh, so you could basically dictate um, who could download what files and where and only where they're able to do so. Um, maybe you have interns in for the summer. Uh, certainly going to want to make sure that they're very careful with the files they're downloading. So perhaps maybe you just put Office 365 SharePoint focus on those three users and let uh, the platform go ahead and monitor the rest of the users in a normal fashion. You do have that flexibility with Perch. Um, and why we started Perch all along? Well, what we saw as a result of our experience in large banking was that the large banks and the large companies could afford security. They could afford threat intelligence, they could afford analysts, but the small, medium-sized businesses couldn't. Um, so we needed a way to bring all of that threat intel, uh, all of that protection down to the smaller size businesses. And that's why we created Perch. Uh, Perch is a multi-tenant platform. It was created specifically for the MSP market uh, and it's priced based on a per seat model. So hopefully it fits within the way current um, MSPs are pricing but we create and enable communities to protect themselves. Uh, we also ingest all of the ISAC feeds and threat intel from people like Cisco, Fortinet, uh, several others, um, so that we're using that threat intel in a very productive and positive way. Um, if you have any experience with any of the ISACs, you know that that information could be overwhelming. We actually will ingest the ISAC threat intel, whether it's H ISAC, FS ISAC, utility ISAC, uh, we will ingest those threat feeds and use that to hunt for threats within uh, that specific subscriber's network. So if you're a bank, you subscribe to the FISAC, uh, you're overwhelmed with the amount of information, subscribe to Perch, we'll ingest it, we'll use it on your behalf to hunt for threats, and you're certainly getting what you paid for. We also wanted to allow full visibility and threat detection and response. Um, our SIM is visible from both our MSP partners, but also the end users through read-only access. So if you have end users and if there's an incident, they're gonna to wanna to have access to those SIM logs as quickly as possible. With Perch, they already have them. You can extend um, uh, user rights only and they'll have um, visibility into their own SIM should they need that quickly. Uh, and the other thing about Perch is we, we focus less on marketing buzzwords and really more of what matters. Um, and that's really the focus of Perch. We're, we're cutting through a lot of the fat. We're getting to what really is needed and required, and we're delivering it to the small to medium-sized business. Um, Perch is a monitored detective control. It's really almost like a network detective. Um, our SOC is just like an alarm system. Our network sensors, which, fit, uh, which can either be virtual, which are free, or physical, which is a one-time fee, those go behind the firewall on the inside of the network and they're gonna ingest all the logs from all the devices, as well as the security solutions like WebRoot, like Cisco, like Meraki. Uh, we're gonna ingest all of those logs so you don't have to, as well as the alarms, so you don't have to go into multiple platforms to identify or suppress alarms. Perch is gonna ingest all of that. 
We're going to absorb the false positives. We're going to absorb um, the uh, network hygiene issues. And we're only going to forward those threats that have been identified as true threats through deep packet inspection. And we're one of the few that do that. The value prop to the MSP community is your techs are going to be more productive and more efficient because they're not sorting through lines of, 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 uh, uh, of code or, or logs or alarms. They're going to be presented with the exact threat, what that threat is, where it came from, and the analyst phone number um, and name. So that way, if you're not familiar with that threat, if it's something new, you can pick up the phone and you can call that SOC analyst. They're not metered, so they'll speak to you as long as you need. That way you can identify the threat, understand it, and remediate it as quickly as possible. And then our threat intelligence platform is like your personal CIA. We're looking for the bad guys so you don't have to, and we're doing it based on intelligence that we're able to glean from a number of sources. Um, our, CCT cam our CCTV cameras are just like, uh, or, or, or our, our elastic backend and SIM are just like your CCTV cameras. We're recording, we're watching all the logs, we're identifying those threats. And then our SOC analysts, along with mach machine learning, uh, are your security robots that are protecting you. And then again, at the very end, our security tool integration for threat mitig mitigation. You know, that's really how we're going to help protect you. Um, the things that you can do with Perch, pretty cool. You get true security monitoring, 24 by 7, 365 for all sources of data. Uh, our SOC analysts run uh, nonstop. Uh, there's a minimum of 12 on, uh, on site at any one time, and that grows depending on the number of clients. I actually think now there's up to 14, uh, but we're, we're always, uh, we're all, all of our SOC analysts are located in the United States. Uh, they're all U.S. citizens, and they're all badged, perched employees. So uh, for anybody that's doing work with DOD, CMMC requirements, we meet those as far as uh, uh, having a U.S.-based SOC SIM and uh, employees. Uh, we solve for cloud-based threats like account takeovers, data leaks, access monitoring. We also help resolve regulatory requirements along storage, retention, and review. Uh, so some medical organizations have to have their logs stored for seven years. We certainly can do that. Also with CMMC, there are certain requirements that you have to meet. Uh, we meet some of those as well. We don't meet them all, but we meet the ones that certainly uh, we can and address, and that certainly uh, helps you identify where the gaps are to meet that specific requirement. Now, just a couple of uh, examples uh, before I close. Um, one example is a small bank uh, that we had as a client. I had 15 full-time employees and another 30 subcontractors. Uh, unfortunately, they had an email compromise. Yeah, they got uh, they were clicking on that free Pizza Hut pizza offer for lunch, uh, and so certainly they got compromised. Well, the bad guys ended up uh, watching their email platform and identifying who their cellular provider was. Uh, they were able then to intercept and route the SMS messages from that cellular provider uh, to them. Um, and the bank itself, the only uh, second factor of authentication they had was, in fact, SMS. So when somebody went in, they logged into their bank account, uh, they had to go ahead and uh, get an SMS uh, approval. Once they did, they started uh, um, forwarding transactions to their own bank account. And the next thing you know, after three different transfers, the bank was out almost $100,000. Um, the threat to the business, it was a very, very quick theft and it really threatened their ability to make payroll. So fortunately, uh, with the bank and the FBI, we, we helped to recover almost all of it, uh, but a lot of lessons were learned by this organization. Um, and truly, the small organizations are uh, the most vulnerable, um, and from not only a cybersecurity, but also from a going out of business perspective. Um, this particular bank, again, was able to recover most of the money, but there for about four hours, it was a really, really rocky experience and no fun for anybody involved. And then lastly, a more common story, uh, email compromise, bad guys get in, they start forwarding emails to a, a, an alternative mailbox. Uh, while they're in, they're watching all the intelligence, or they're watching all the emails, they're watching the flow, uh, they're watching for financial transactions, and they're watching for the frequency of those transactions. Uh, if it was a real estate office, they would try to alter the bank routing numbers so that those transactions would go to them, not the actual bank. Uh, and then they start impersonating the client to the clients, their clients. So now the, the, their clients were getting emails from a third party thinking it was uh, the original business they were doing business with. Uh, the bad guys were sending information about new bank routing numbers. And sure enough, um, fortunately, in this particular case, we caught it. 
Uh, we caught the traffic going north south. Um, and we also identified the IP address of the original uh, threat. So uh, we were able to alert the organization. Uh, they were able to uh, take uh, down the machine, uh, isolate it, uh, sanitize it, and obviously protect uh, their business. Um, but that's really uh, what Perch is about. Again, we are co-managed threat detection. We are on the inside of your network, watching north, south, and east and west, um, and, uh, and preventing or identifying a threat after it's gotten through your preventative controls, escalating that threat, and then providing remediation help. Richard, that was absolutely great. Thank you so much. Well, it was my pleasure, and I certainly hope if you guys have any questions, I'm certainly available as well. Yeah, throw them in the chat, guys, if you have any questions or in the Q&A box, that works as well. And we'll give them a few minutes to see if anybody does have any questions. Well, it doesn't look like it. Um, guys, next week we will be uh, covering the history of hacking. Um, same time as usual. I will be sending an email here out shortly for that. Um, Richard, again, thank you so much for your time today. It was my pleasure and uh, anything you guys need, just let me know. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Bye guys.